happens right right after high let's start there let's start right after high school so right after high school I was pretty much just done with education I was so so done with it you know uh, like mentally I was I could not handle any education at that point because high school was not great for me so I did a gap year but it was kind of an, uh, an unplanned gap year so I didn't really plan any travel or any uh, you know work experience stuff I, I didn't really plan anything so obviously it wouldn't have been great if I just spent that year doing nothing sitting at home so, luckily I didn't do that, and in September, on September 8th, I believe, I started this YouTube channel, and that panned out pretty well, so I'm pretty happy that I did that gap year, that I took that um, opportunity to start this, because I'd always wanted to start a YouTube channel, but never really had the persistence to do it, and now because I didn't have anything better to do, I had the time to really put effort into that, and that's not really what this video is about. So anyway, I spent that gap year pretty much focusing on YouTube, not for the whole year. Um, I had some, some little time in there where didn't have inspiration, stuff like that, but the YouTube channel did pretty well, and that's when I got interested into stuff like, you know, online communication, online media, stuff like that, and that made me choose communication science as a bachelor's degree, because that kind of talks about researching the effects that media have on people. Um, so, but that was something I was interested in, and it, it was a very broad bachelor's degree, but especially new media, online media, was something that I was interested in. So, I started that. Like, it was, I enjoyed it. I thought it was interesting. But it was clear from when I started that it wasn't really my thing. Like, I wasn't great at it. Which, you know, I, I'm still glad that I chose that. Not only because it allowed me to walk the path that I've walked now, but also because it really did broaden what I could do. Because, for example, I was always really scared to do presentations, public speaking, stuff like that. But that's something that was very common. Like, presentations were very common in uh, especially the first year of my bachelor's degree. And so I did a lot of those. And I got really used to them. And now I can still get nervous, you know, but um, it's rare that I shut down during a presentation or something, which I, I used to do. I used to just completely shut down and just, one time I even fainted during a presentation in high school. That was pretty bad. I literally just dropped to the ground um, and the teacher caught me, so I didn't actually like 
easier for me not to put that much effort into studying, but it also made it a little bit less fun for me, because I like, I've always liked getting like that, the, the maximum grades that you can get and striving for that, but in something where a lot of writing is involved, it's pretty much impossible to get the highest possible grade, because there's always like something that you could have done better, right? While in maths, there is a very, like if you've practiced enough, there's a, there's a very good possibility that you'll get everything correct, and then you get the maximum grade. Like there's, there's nothing that you could have done better. So getting the highest possible grades is a lot more achievable in stuff like maths or physics or, I don't know, probably stuff like chemistry as well, but that was never my, uh, that was, I was never the best at that, particularly. So, in high school that always made me want to go for those maximum grades in stuff like maths and physics, because it was achievable. necessarily get a thrill from doing maths or physics. It was something that, you know, I could enjoy a little bit of challenge from. Um, so it was all right, but not my passion, I guess. So that school because I forced myself to spend all of my time not just on these subjects but partially these and try to maximize my grades but when I started doing communication science it was different because I knew that those grades were unachievable and that made me a lot more chill with it so it made me like eh, I can you know, kind of follow the lectures and read a little bit and go over my notes and then I'll get like a 7.5 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10. And I was alright with that because I knew that if I spent a lot of effort on it, maybe I could get like an 8.5, but that, that wouldn't satisfy me if I'd done a lot of work for it. Like if I'd done a lot of work for it, I want a 10 out of 10. So, I guess I was more satisfied with not doing a lot of work and getting a 7 out of 7.5 out of 10 than doing a lot of work and getting an 8.5 out of 10. Kind of like, um, it, it, what is that? Is it called the Pareto Principle? Where, you know, uh, 20% of the time it goes into like 80% of your grade. Well, it, it applies to a lot of different things, but the 20-80% the rule. So, if I'd spent 80%, you know, the rest of the 80% of the time, then I would have only gotten the 20% extra in the grade which wasn't worth it for me. And this was, I don't know, it was a, a way to not burn myself out with uni, which is a good thing. But also, I wasn't really enjoying, like I wasn't thriving, which I kind of missed. I'm not, it, it's not, um, it was an all right bachelor's degree for me, especially because I did get to broaden myself. But then we get to my minor in communication science. Well, the minor that I had to choose in the bachelor's degree, which could be a completely unrelated subject. And so I 
chose that. Um, something completely unrelated. Programming. And that was because it was one of the last things, last options. And, I mean, obviously it would be useful. Programming seems like a very useful, seemed to me like a very useful skill these days. So, I chose the programming minor. So, just a semester of full-time, just learning how to program. And then that started, and it was literally the most fun I'd ever had studying anything. By far. Because this was, I'd never actually had, like, proper fun studying anything in school, anyway. And this was the first time that, that it was actually fun for me. Um, and I just spent all my time after uni on programming and just, I've, I've spoken about this before, but that was just, I loved it. And that made me realize that I wanted to switch to that in one way or another. Like, I, want, I didn't want to continue communication science. But I also realized that I would probably have to finish my communication science bachelor's degree because if I started something with programming now, as in a bachelor's degree, that would take another three years. After that, and since they start, start in September, and this minor started in September as well, that would mean I'd have to spend, like, this was my third year of my bachelor's degree, so I'd already spent three years doing a bachelor's degree. And then if I wanted to switch to something like computer science, that would have been an extra three years, and I wouldn't have finished that one if I'd, you know, switched before finishing communication science. So then I would have spent six years on a bachelor's degree with only one degree. And that didn't seem like a great option to me. So what I figured would be a better option was to finish communication science and then do some extra subjects, some extra courses, and then switch to a different master's degree. So that I would only have to do one extra year, still got my communication science bachelor's degree, but with some extra requirements for a different uh, different master's degree that you know that master's degree would be in something else now i pretty quickly found out that uh, artificial intelligence was my main interest uh, within you know the computer world because we did some projects that kind of it was like, you know, kind of like a really complicated puzzle, and it was really challenging, and it was just a lot of fun. So, that's when I went to, I don't know what the exact name was, but it was like a, a master's masters were being presented, and, you know, I could go to, like, uh, I went to, I think, like, five presentations about different master's degrees, like computer, computer science, artificial intelligence, um, I don't remember the others, to be honest, um, maybe mathematics, I actually don't. software engineering is another one I went to. It doesn't really matter. Um, I knew from that day that artificial intelligence was my main interest and that I would go 100% for that. But the problem was that that was the one hardest master's degree to get into because uh, it's, you know, fairly new and there's a lot of interest in it. There's just not many professors, and there's not much space, like physical space, to give the classes in at our uni. 
so the, the places are just really limited. 180 students, um, or at that time it was 150 students, so it has grown a little bit. So obviously they just accept the people, the students, that are most suited to that master's degree. And I went up to the professor that did the presentation about the master's degree that uh, on that master's day. And I uh, told him what my background was, you know, that I was studying communication science. <laughs> Frankenstein of a curriculum 
the side. One thing they also looked at for the master's degree is um, like projects, like your own projects that you've done related to AI. So I set out to make, you know, to just code stuff, to code AI stuff. And um, I've done a, a couple of streams that had to do with that, or maybe just one that had to do with that specifically. At least one. That was my last stream. And um, that was just me working on those uh, projects, or mostly the presentation of the projects, because the projects themselves were already kind of done at that point. Um, but yeah, basically just um, coding neural networks.
is a lot of it is just the same but lower level than probability theory um, although I am working with R for the first time the uh, the programming language or statistics R which is convenient I, uh, I'd never used that before and uh, I feel like it might be nice to know how to do that so that is useful thing that I still have to finish is my thesis for communication science. And it's, it shouldn't even be that tricky because I've already got a large part of it done. But the tricky part is getting the motivation to do it because it's completely, completely irrelevant for what I want to do. I want to study AI and then I'm stuck here having to write my thesis about a completely unrelated subject that I chose two years ago. I know, pretty bad. Um, and I still need to finish that. And I just don't feel like it. But I have to. Because it would be ridiculous if I got into this, you know, selective master's degree and then the only reason I didn't get in is because I couldn't get the motivation to finish my thesis. But then, for me, the more I am obligated to do something that I don't want to do, the more my mind shuts down, which is a problem. But, you know, I have to finish it. I have to finish that thesis. But it's just very hard mentally because I just that is motivation wise the hardest thing for me um just makes me want to lie in bed and do nothing as opposed to for example AI which makes me literally jump out of bed in excitement and start you know and run to my laptop to start working on it um so yeah, that's uh, not that. But after I finish those things, this last module and my thesis, I will graduate communication science. And then for the rest of the summer, I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna do some fun studying for AI, trying to get ahead before the master starts. And, um, and then the master will start, and I've already got, got all the courses planned out, like which ones I'm going to follow, and in what order, and which extra courses I'm going to do, and so obviously I shouldn't pick too many courses, because I don't want to burn myself out in the first year, but I am very tempted, I'm just so tempted to pick all of the courses, but that's not possible, because there's like, the master's degree is two years, and there's way too many options to do in those two years. But I, I do think I'll do some extra ones, um, because there's just so many good ones that I want to learn about. And then I also want to do side projects. excited about all the, all the possibilities, and also about meeting like-minded like -minded people who also like studying AI, and I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited about it, and I think that is where I will end this video, because I have to get working on my thesis. <laughs> So, anyway, I just felt like uh, keeping you guys up to date, and I hope you got something out of this. I personally don't know. <laughs> don't know why, but some people like the rambles, um, and then others just like 
being up to date with the, you know, what I'm doing, I guess. So I appreciate you guys all sticking around, and thank you for watching.